Hey guys, Ponce here with another video topic requested by All Time, our $100 Patreon supporter. So thanks again for that incredible amount of generosity, All Time, uh, and allowing us to sort of continue on with being full time here and all this video stuff. Um, so some of you might remember the previous video I did for this was in regards to the topic of writing and you know my thoughts on that. Uh, this time it's weapons and everything. I guess just do with weapons. I wasn't given a specific prompt. It was just like weapons. Um, so I'm just going to ramble on with that, which is fine for me because I've been kind of dealing with that kind of stuff a lot of my life, much like writing. So all time making things really easy on us here. So I appreciate that. And again, thank you very much all time uh, for supporting the, uh, the channel through Patreon. Okay. Well, uh, well, in regards to me specifically, a lot, of, most of my background in regards to this sort of stuff comes from Kindle. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I did it for about 12 years ish. It's been over a decade since I've really been active in it or done it at all, I suppose. Um, so it was just kind of like, again, when I was much younger, um, but yeah, way back when I was, uh, I, I made it to about Nidang, which, you know, I guess the English equivalent to that it would be, you know, something like second degree black belt or something like that, which means absolutely nothing. You know, who knows? That could either mean I'm some sort of trained killer or I'm just a graduate from some, some sort of mic dojo. Um, it, it's not relevant. So anyway, um, yeah, did that for a good amount of time. Uh, so as a result, I'm actually more, you know, I, I'm versed mainly with shinais, so that's the practice weaponry, but, you know, you put a bladed weapon in my hand, I can I can do some things with it. Um, something I always found kind of amusing about that is, uh, it doesn't come up so much, because, you know, I don't talk about kendo as much anymore, because I don't really do it uh, at this point in time, but, you know, people always used to talk about the practicality of, of kendo, and it's like, well, what, you know, how are you, how's that going to be of any use when you want to defend yourself, you know, because you're not going to be carrying a sword all the time. And I'm just like, that. that's not the point, really. I mean, I'm not going to get into some sort of life and death struggle with anyone. Neither are you. And no, and no one is. We're just, you know, dudes on the internet here. Um, like, in my entire life, the closest thing to an altercation I've ever had is one guy who wanted to start shit. And I stared at him for a bit until he ran away. <laughs> so, I mean, like, you know, we're not, you know, going to be running around killing anyone here. Uh, although, incidentally, on that general bane of things, I actually find Kendo is probably relatively useful for that in the sense that uh, I, there, there was this one interview with this Yakuza guy that I always thought was really interesting that I, I was watching. Uh, and, you know, he was talking about, oh, there's this perception that Yakuza are all these crazy, crazy martial artists and they, they're really good and experienced or, you know, really good at knowing how to do very specific things in fights. And it's like, no, we're just a bunch of crazy bastards that uh, basically, you know, if shit hits the fan, we pick up, or most of us are guys, we're just going to pick up whatever's near us that's like a weapon and then start using it. So yeah, that's the thing about actually not being trained with weapons. If you're not specifically trained with weapons, it's a bit it's it's quite a bit different from just sort of unarmed combat. So there's very, very specific motions that you know, you probably should know how to do it. And I don't want to get into the specifics of it, but basically it's not, a lot of it's not exactly natural. So it's something you kind of got to train to do. So I think, I'm, again, you know, I, I would find that probably pretty useful if I want to pick up a bottle and gouge someone's eye out. I can do it rather efficiently. But um, anyway, uh, so, so that's Kindle for you there. Aside from that, well, actually, hold on a sec. Why don't I just show you what I have here? It's over, like I keep it near my computer. So um, I, have, I have a number of things. There's also a machete at the other side of the room, but that's, we'll leave that over there. So basically, I'm just going to kind of be... Look, this is my, <laughs> my cheap pop filter on the mic. But anyway, um, a couple of things here. So I got a, a regular katana, just like a, an actual sword, and a kendo shinai. So the sword is actually for iaido. This used to belong to my dad, but he doesn't, you know, he stopped doing iaido, so it became mine or something. Uh, and uh, this is the shinai here. This is the bamboo practice sword, which is what I, you know, mostly used over the years. Uh, so I, let me just stand up and just kind of show you some things. I don't have much room to swing this stuff around, but yeah, you know, just kind of swing it around, you practice with it. 
Um, and then there's the, the actual katana over here. Not the most interesting demo there, but um, at any rate, yeah. The uh, the katana itself, it's not like super sharp. It, it's edged, but you know, it's it's uh, Eido practice thing. You know, you're not supposed to be cutting people up with it and all that. So it'll cut things. Just don't expect it to, you know, slice through sheet metal or <laughs> anything like that. Um, okay, so on the topic of just, I guess, general weaponry, um. And sort of, let's put my headset back on. I, there's no actual sound. It's just, it's really weird making a video if I don't have my headset on. I'm not used to it. So I'm going to put it back on. So yeah, um, in terms of just general weaponry and what I would use, I suppose, as another topic to discuss. You know, we're just talking about weaponry here, so I'm slightly free associating and jumping around. Um, now, of course, I personally, if I had to use it in a fight or something... I mean, I would go with the katana simply because that's what I'm used to. You know, it's not like it'd be the most efficient thing or anything like that. But I don't know. It'd be kind of like if I use something else, it'd be like playing a fighting game and using a character, even though if something might be higher tier or whatever, I'm just not used to it. So I'd probably shy away from it for the most part. Um, in terms of weapon types that I found interesting and look efficient to me and probably would be kind of close to what I'm familiar with, I'd probably actually go with, um, at least in terms of European stuff, uh, I've always kind of been interested in the, was it the, the basket-hilted broadsword. There's, there's a whole bunch of names for it, but it looks something like this. This is just the wiki page on it. Uh, let's see now. So computer. So like this thing here, something like that. As far as I can tell, the blade length is comparable. The weight is comparable. It's going to be one-handed. Um, but I, I've always liked the idea of sort of like the basket-hilted handguard thing. I actually don't like um, the Japanese tsuba guard very much. Let's go back to my webcam here. Actually, let me, I'll grab the sword again. I'll show you guys. So many friggin' cords everywhere here. My, uh, my office is a mess. So, uh, yeah, like the circular guard thing right here. I get it doesn't really offer very much hand protection, which I don't like the idea of. I mean, you know, it's a, kind of a life or death thing, you know. You know, you just kind of miss a parry slightly and then all your fingers are gone. chair back up over here um now of course that would be a one-handed weapon which i don't know i don't necessarily like the idea of too much you know i again it's just what i'm used to i'm not super versed in the use of one-handed weapons specifically um i know you can use the katana one-handed it just doesn't particularly feel designed for it um you know why use one when you can use two you know unless you're using you know you got something in your offhand like a shield or whatever but um of course, I'm, I'm, you know, if I'm going to be fighting someone, I'm assuming an unarmored state. I don't know why anyone would be running around with armor. But then again, why would anyone be running around with swords? But, yeah, you know, whatever. we, we got to decide on some kind of scenario here at some point. Uh, I don't know. It's just a case of sort of stability is the main issue that I've noted again in my limited experience with one-handed versus two-handed. Um, I, I've tried doing like a one-hand versus two-handed sort of stuff, and the, the thing I felt that the one-handed swords were always kind of lacking, um, you know, aside from the fact that just the speed is going to be slower, is like, yeah, the control felt not so good. So, you know, a guy with a two-handed weapon can kind of just hold it with relative stability just down in the middle with the, a good uh, kinseng in, in Japanese would be called, but he's kind of like holding the center like that. And uh, because of the stability, you just got to like knock away the guy with the one-handed sword 
and he can't sort of keep the center. And, I, and again, like, you know, having one head probably has his own advantages as well, which I'm not particularly versed in. But that's just something that I noticed, um, that you know, it was the control was a lot better in terms of controlling the center space with a you know, two-handed weapon. So I don't know, maybe some of you guys out there have more experience with one-handed versus two-handed. Just something I noted. Um, now, of course, if there's other type of weapons, I was talking about pure efficiency and whatnot. I'm sure for a dual-centric context... A uh, rapier would just probably be fantastically good because it is literally designed to fight people one on one as efficiently as possible in an unarmored context. It's just like it's essentially it's not cheating, but you know it's it, it's designed for that. You just kind of like whoop and you poke people, and it's a stabbing because stabbing is super super efficient. Which incidentally would get into like if I was actually fighting someone, I didn't have to pick swords. There's and it was based on melee weapons. I would go with a spear, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um. But uh, yeah, that actually, actually brings up another topic that I found kind of interesting. I was actually talking about this on stream the other day. I don't know why it came up, or I don't remember at this point. But uh, sort of this idea that people, I think a lot of the time, think about weapons in the optimal context way too much. Uh, in the sense that the katana is considered a, for example, we're going to use a katana example, um, is considered a slashing weapon. Therefore, it just magically can't stab. Uh, no, it can stab, it can stab very fast and very powerfully. It's not necessarily designed to do that purely. Yes, it's best at slashing things, but you run someone through with a katana, it's like, whoop, the person is going to die. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's not like it can't do that. Uh, similarly, like, for example, a rapier, it does have a bladed edge. It's, I believe, again, I'm not super versed in a lot of European things, um, which, you know, I would like to be. It's, it's an interesting topic, but um, I, I'm fairly certain those have are supposed to have bladed edges as well, and it may not be designed to slash, but, you know, you, you slash someone across the arm with this big, long-ass metal blade, and it cuts down to the bone right across their forearm. It might not end the fight immediately, but it's probably going to end pretty soon. You know, you do something like that to a person. Now, of course, that you know, it's not going to kill immediately, so it runs into all kinds of issues. Well, if the person doesn't really care if they get, you know, take a flesh wound, and then they're intending to sacrifice their arm, and they go for a killing stroke and just cut through the person, etc., but, you know, it's... That's whatever. Um, so, uh, yeah, again, like, I just kind of, it's not just swords. It comes up in everything, like video games and blah, 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 where things are used in not exactly optimal context, but they can still do it. For example, I don't know, using tanks to deal damage, even though they're not designed to. Um, you know, non-healing classes using healing abilities. And people are like, your class is not supposed to do it. It's not efficient. Well, you know, the situation called for me to use this. I'm going to use it kind of thing. Um, now, there's all kinds of other weapon types from cultures and et cetera that I'm completely not familiar with. Like, I'm not familiar with Chinese weaponry too much. Um, there's a lot of probably interesting stuff that I would like to mess around with, but I've never had the opportunity to. Uh, Middle Eastern weaponry looks interesting. Um, really, just kind of any region around the world typically has something interesting going on there. But... Um, uh, uh, so there was that topic again here's me rambling jumping topics again but there was that topic I, I kind of touched upon was like that if I would use a spear um, again if it was just like limited to melee weapons and not just swords yeah no I would just pick some kind of like spear or some sort of polearm weapon that can probably both slash and stab but isn't like too too heavy I think that would be absolutely optimal because essentially I found that you know messing around with stuff I, I yeah, messed around with, you know, makeshift spears or swords and all that occasionally. Not too much. It's been a number of years. Because um, I'm old now. But, uh, yeah, I've just found that essentially, and, and basically what I've read has all sort of more or less confirmed my findings. Range is king. <laughs> you know, you just stay away from the person. And the, fir the faster or basically the longer your range is to keep a person away from you and being able to hit them before they're in striking range of you, just the better. Um, it, it is very, very difficult to use the gaming term, gap close on a person in inside of that extra little kill zone that they have, and you just kind of like keep them away. And yeah, there, there's things you can do. Uh, yeah, you, like, because I've done it. Um, but, you know, if I give a spear to like a less experienced person and I have a sword, yes, I can do things to gap close and get in and I've done it. But it's hard. It's just like this person has it easy, and the fact that they're less experienced than me is why I'm getting in. If they were like, if basically, if I cloned myself and there was like spear ponts and sword ponts, spear ponts would win. Um, or if, you know, spear ponts 
well, I guess it wouldn't be cloned exactly, but basically take my sword experience and then transfer that to spear experience on um, spear upon this side. Anyway, I hope you guys get what I'm talking about here. Uh, so yeah, and like I don't know. I actually had this discussion again on stream probably a couple weeks ago. I don't know why. I'm sort of like, well, no, just close in and then grab the shaft. And it's like, yeah, good luck. You're just gonna get, you know, gutted most of the time if you just try and rush in like that. Um, not to say that you, you know, again, you are hopeless in that situation, but um, oh, actually, again, you know, we we're talking about sort of like rapiers and stuff like that, and how they're super specialized at just like jabbing people, you know, at a relatively long range. That kind of idea, but then you take it to the more extreme, and then you have a spear. So I, I personally would like to have that extra range. Uh, so yeah, that's it there. Um, in terms of any kind of specific pole arm that I would use for that, I don't know. Like I don't want to get into the the pole arm naming game thing, where well, this spike is at this angle, and this one is at this angle, so that's at that. And that's that's uh, not a particularly useful discussion, I find. Uh, aside from that, uh, th there is another pseudo-related topic in terms of weaponry that I could kind of talk about. Um, basically, when I was going to university, uh, I got my degree in archaeology. And even as an undergrad, the kind of stuff that I like to sort of focus in on whenever you know, the classes allowed me to, was uh, I had a more a concise and better term for this, but it was something along the lines of the archaeology of interpersonal combat and warfare. So basically fighting with stuff um, and archaeology in relation to that. And then I kind of tailored most of my papers and et cetera, et cetera, to that. So if I were to go back into schooling, which, you know, is relatively decent possibility, I suppose, like if I went back to get a master's and maybe eventually a PhD or something like that, it would be something, you know, in that general region again. It was always what sort of interested me. Um, I remember I did like, you know, papers talking about, uh, what was it? Uh, I did one on like Fijian weaponry and, uh, what was it? Sort of the notion of the importance of culture in how fights actually take place and fighting not, isn't necessarily, you know, a matter of efficiency. It's, it's a matter of culture, et cetera, et cetera. And the weapons that are used are dictated by, you know, stuff, even though technically better stuff is available. This is the more culture acceptable or the more manly thing to use. And, 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 and um, but I don't want to get into that right now. Maybe that's a future video topic. I always do that. It's like, this is a future video topic. And then never end up making it but uh anyway uh, i suppose the, the the note that we can end on then is uh another uh, viewer of mine uh hot seat hero some time ago he did he's like a, a blacksmith or you know like a hobby blacksmith or actually no he said he takes commissions i think now um Although his forge broke, I wonder if he fixed it. He sent me this thing here. It's like this little dagger type thing, which I thought was really neat. Uh, it was very kind of him to send this thing. Uh, and it's like made from really, I forget what the term for it. It's like high, I guess it's a high carbon steel or something because it's from, or is it steel? Or whatever. It's like railroad tracks. And apparently I've been told like this is actually really good for making weapons out of if you just like, you know, have, you don't have anything else and it's just something lying around. It's just very sturdy, etc. Um, and actually, no, like railroad tracks would be high carbon. I don't know what it is. Anyway, it, it, it's allegedly very solid, and it's kind of like the, it's not bladed, or it's bladed, but it's not like sharp. You could sharpen it down, but it's mainly it's got a point on it. You could stab this into someone, and it would not be good uh, for them. Now, it's kind of interesting because I referred to it as functional salvage because yeah, railroad tracks and that kind of you know stuff like that is made out of. It's kind of got like this interesting sort of wire wrapped. Um, uh, hilt thing going on here. Uh, so it's kind of messing around with this thing. And it's sort of interesting because holding it normally like this, it doesn't feel particularly as stable as if I were to grab it like this. So see, I stick my hand over the cross piece and because the blade isn't sharp, I can kind of do this. And I, I think I could really punch it into someone if I were to hold it like that instead of just sort of the regular grip. Um, you know, unless I want to stab it into something like that. But anyway. Uh... Yeah. Anyway, thanks, Hot Seat Zero. This this is it's an amusing little piece. Well, um, no, I don't I don't really have anything else to talk about on the matter. At least not off the top of my head. I'm sure after I'm done the video, I'll be like, oh yeah, I should have talked about that or that or that. Um. Oh yeah, you know, let's do a quick demo on the uh, the katana thing. I was talking about stabbing with it. Let me show you guys what I mean by stabbing with with the weapon like that again. Like, if anyone tells you you don't stab with a katana, no. It, it's a thing.
And again, that gets into the whole notion. I was just kind of doing it ad hoc, so it wasn't, you know, particularly efficient of the way I was doing it. But, um, yeah, the, the notion of stability, I guess, kind of kicks in as well. Because if you're doing that one hand, the blade kind of, like, goes around a lot, and it's more difficult to aim. Whereas, you know, I'm, I'm able to aim it relatively straight with two hands by comparison. But anyway, uh, that's it for me. Thanks again to All Time for your very generous uh, contribution through Patreon. 100 bucks is the second month now. So 200 bucks, so I appreciate that greatly. Aside from all the other support you give in the channel. Uh, but yeah, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>